Hello, this is Sue from dragoncreations.co.uk and today I'm going to show you how to make these which is a coaster within a coaster so this is a 9cm small coaster mould it holds 60 grams so numbers I mixed up 120 grams, uh, mine's a one-to-one -one resin, so that was 63A, 57B. Then I decanted, slightly different this time, 48 clear, 24 mica one, and my mica one is brown sugar, which is like a, a nice coppery colour. Uh, 24 of mica 2 which is silver grey and then I have 24 of clear 2 left to go in the middle right the reason I'm not adding pigment this time is because I want to see what happens with a clear edge so just make sure your clear is touching your edge as normal If you take your time doing this, you shouldn't get any bubbles. And then split it between the two. And I'm just going to go on top of what I've just poured because these will close over. I'm expecting that, so that's not a problem. Just bending down to check their level, which they are. make sure you use all your clear up I mean if you want to you can put tint in like normal and that would be 24 but I thought I'd have a go without anything on the edge this time I'm trying to see if my cracks will go right to the edge and how clear they'll become right so that is our two rings down and I'll go in for a bubble. And please, please, please do not use a torch on these flimsy moulds because they will just, the silicon will just stick to the resin. Just going to bring those bubbles to the surface. the bubbles we've just brought up I mean you might as well spend a bit of time and get rid of any bubbles in this bit make sure you've got none around the edges excellent Don't put your uh, lighter too close to the resin, otherwise you'll, t you'll scorch it. Right, okay. Now, mica one. And we're going to puddle pour. Now, normally, uh, mica one is your dominant colour. So this will be, um, if you're not doing splits or trying to do um, an outer ring, different colour to an inner ring, if you're just doing a straight dragon scale pour, your outer, your first colour that you lay down 
will normally be your dominant colour. So we're just going to puddle pour right in the middle. I knew it was going to drop. We're going to make sure our circles are the same size. And this tiny, tiny bit of micro I've got there, I'm going to save. Okay, quick D bubble. So our micro is going underneath our clear, which is what we want. Okay, micro two. Again, just puddle pour. But I'm not going to save any of this, so I'm not going to put all of this one in. So I'm just going to put it right in the middle on top of what I've already poured. Make sure you always put it in the middle on top of what you've just laid down, otherwise it will muddy. Okay. Just trying to get every last little drop I can. Again, debubble because oh, come on, micro likes to hold micro bubbles. Right, and now we're going to go in with our clear toe, which was 24 grams again. Just going to scrape this all to one side. we're going to puddle pour again a little bit of height And I'll just scrape the last tiny bit out. Just check my levels, lovely. bubble a 
and then with that last little bit of copper that I saved I'm just going to put that in the middle but I'm just literally going to let gravity put it in the middle for me because I don't really want it to move very far and the only reason I'm doing this is because we end up with a clear spot in the middle and I've decided I want it to be coloured so ideally I want this mica to sink so I'm pouring, letting, gra letting gravity push it down That's it. Okay. Looking everything over there. And then we go in for a final really good debubble. Because we don't want these to be domed, we want them to be level for the next stage. And we're not going to demold them. We need them to stay in the moulds and I shall show you why for the next stage. Right, okay, I shall cover these over and leave them to set and I shall see you in the next bit. So, bye for now. Right, these are all nice and set now. So what we're going to do is we're not going to demold them, we're just going to give the moulds a nice quick wipe with alcohol to make sure there's nothing on there. And we're also going to give these a nice Quick spray with alcohol or isopropyl alcohol oh I said it <laughs> I can't normally say that word yeah. so they've just had a nice quick spray okay numbers I mixed up 130 which is 68 a 62 B then um, I decanted 26 grams and I put a level spoon of holographic gold glycerin instead of pigment. Then I decanted 26 of clear one, 26 of mica one, 26 of mica two and 26 of clear two. And I used the same micas that we used before which is the silver grey and the brown sugar. <coughs> put them to one side and again it was just a heat heap spoon all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to put these try and center them I'm just going to bring them towards me slightly so I can try and make sure it's centered and then once we've got them centered we're going to give them a good push down to seal them off onto the mould so that we don't get any underflow. Move that for the moment. There's a hair there, I can see that already. That's a mosey hair, <laughs> little monkey. Right, give it a good 
push down so it makes good contact and you'll feel that they're not going to move anywhere now okay so we're going to attempt to do dragon scales whether this will work or not i do not know so just going to go around the edge as normal So I'm putting it slap bang in the middle because I'd like it ideally to touch both moulds. If it's not touching I'm just going to try and fill the gaps that I see. So it's touching the inside and the outside mould. I mean, as I say, this might, might not work, but I thought if I treat it like a trinket tray, which I know we can get dragon scales in. And there's a possibility we might be able to get scales in this. There's a little tiny gap there. I'm just going to coax that over. There. Oh, tiny, tiny gap there. Okay, so the glitter is touching both sides now. last little drop I can come on here we go right check for bubbles on there Sorry, I don't mean to knock you. There's one there. Okay. Right, so now we're going with our clear one. I'm going to go on top of the glitter. Also, going to put a little spot in the center. A little spot in the center. And then the rest I'll put on top of the glitter. So it's a barrier against the glitter and the mica, really. Make sure I've got them even. Use it all up. And the reason I've put a spot in the centre is because I've got a feeling, because this mould is matte, that the micas might not want to move 
like I normally would. So putting a spot in the middle might help the micas start moving a bit better. But as I say, I've never done it before this way round, so might not need that spot in the middle. They might flow really well. But I've just got a feeling there's going to be a tiny bit of friction there. mica so as normal I'm going to puddle pour right in the middle and I'm going to right in the middle of that spot so hopefully it will start moving try and make sure I've got my circles the same size And ideally, these numbers should fill this mould from right to the top. Because I weighed how much the insert coaster was, and I took it away from 140. So how much your insert weighs will mean how much you'll be able to get in. Right, I'm just going to take this to the edge. I'm not going to take it over the edge. I'm just going to take it to the edge. So that hopefully when we put the next mica in it will tip it over. almost there isn't it see that's the thing because it's level surface tension is just holding it there at the moment bubble because we disturbed it get the outside a quick going over okay so our uh, mica two Again, we're going to puddle pour this and I'm hoping it should tip it over. It really doesn't want to go, does it? Want to go, sorry. In this one. So that lip is holding it. Well, if it doesn't work, at least we've used the same colours. So 
it should be interesting either way. I just want to get every last little bit out I can so that we can tip it over. I've got an idea. I'm going to take this grey over. Just, it does not want to go. That surface tension does not want to be broken. No, not at all. No, I'll have to do it with the clear then. That's interesting. Okay, so we'll puddle pull with the clear. Here we go, it's gone now. It's all sitting on top. Why is that one not going? I think I'm going to make up a tiny bit more clear actually. Because it's all sitting on top of that. So bear with me, I'm going to make a little bit more clear. Right, I've just mixed up another 30 grams, which is 14 and 16. And I'm going to puddle pour again. See if we can get this moving. Whoa! <laughs> that is full to the brim. So I don't think we're going to get scales. I didn't need that much. I needed 20, I think. Let's squeeze a little bit more in this one. Nicely domed, shall we say. <laughs> so. Put that there for a moment. Let's see if I can just coax this to join up. See, I, I didn't expect that. The surface tension was being held by that mould. Did not want to go over. This one did, but that one, nope. It was not budging. There. Okay, so I shall give a debubbly. It's full of bubbles where I just quickly mixed it. Well, I don't hold out much hope for scales, but as I say, it will be an interesting pattern. How's it? It's a bubble, quite deep bubble there. See, that's what you get for mixing up resin too quickly. There, so these are full to the top, so I only needed 20 grams more. So instead of 130, I should have done 150. So next time I will learn, I'll do this again, and next time I will have those measurements, and hopefully we'll get it to cascade. Did not want to move. Right, so I shall leave these to set overnight, cover them, leave them to set overnight, and we shall see what's happened in the morning in the demoulding. So I shall see you then. Bye for now.
right they're set so let's get, oh, let's get rid of them moved everything around then so there's no scales on the back oh look at that though now we have over pour so I have a tool which is just a cocktail skewer that I've rounded the edge off with a nail file and I'm just going to run that round because they're not 100% set there we go and the overpour will just pull off like that. Quite simple. And if it doesn't come off, you can always just give it a quick sanding, but it should just come off. Anyway, I shall spend some time doing that in a minute. So. Oh, look, we've got cracks in this one as well. Excellent. Not so much overpour on this one. Because they're not 100, 100% set. They're a little bit flexible, so I can get the inserts out. So hardly any overpour on that one. Right, okay, let me get rid of these little bits that I've just taken off. We'll start with this one. I don't think there's going to be any scales in the middle, but I have an idea to get scales in the middle. No, I didn't think so. But I thought, I'm going to try this again because I've thought of a way we might be able to get scales in the middle. A little bit of overpour, take that off. I'll do that in a minute because I'll spend ages doing that. And again, no scales in the middle, but we've got them around the outside. Okay, so. Oh, look at that. That is so pretty. Oops. So I've got a little bit of tidying up to do by taking the overpour off. Oh, and look at that one. And look how flush they are. So yes, we got scales on the outside, but not on the inside. So I'm going to do them again because I have an idea of how possibly we can get scales on the inside. So, and the other thing is, oops, they're matte on the inside so if you, you could, I could leave it like that because that's quite interesting just the scales on the outside but I like a challenge and I'd like to try and get some scales on the inside so I'm going to do it again but yeah a coaster and a coaster with dragon scales around the outside and dragon scales on the inside I hope you enjoyed that video and if you do have trouble um, if it does if you do get overflow there just gently don't with an don't do it with a knife do it with something blunt maybe a dotting tool even and just gently break the seal and then you can like you see it saw me do bend them out and then the overflow will just come off just pick off in in bits like that So yes, I am really pleased with them. Just a little bit of tidying up to do, take the overflow off. And uh, I shall see you in the next one. I have an idea. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.